If there's one store that pretty much needs to ban me, it's probably Harbor Freight. Every time I walk in there, I spend way too much money. And because I'm always looking at things under $10 for the content that I make, yeah, it's a store I should stay out of because there's so much stuff under 10. So let me show you what I picked up the last time I was in Harbor Freight. The reason I went to Harbor Freight in the first place was to be able to pick up a metric socket set that I could use to remove the hot end, or I should say specifically the nozzle portion of a 3D printer while it's really hot. So you don't want to damage the piece by using a wrench that could then crush the, um, the brass. You need something that's going to fit well, that isn't going to melt, and so of course I got one there. And they had a full set in... Uh, for about 10 bucks and that of course triggered that whole thing in my brain it's like 10 bucks that that would work for my video and of course then i got to get an sae version the other one is already upstairs so this was the first thing i got and if you just need something to kind of get a set of metric sockets now these are not impact rated but they were plenty good enough and i really like that they're color coded making it a little bit easier to identify which one you need so that was the very first thing, of course, I picked up, but then I kept walking and found a bunch of other items too. First time I walked around Harbor Freight and did that under 10 video, I don't know if I missed the entire aisle or what, but there was an entire section dedicated to flashlights. There were actually a lot of flashlights under $10. Let me go ahead and check these out. So this one right here, the 65 lumen pen light, it's not even here. I actually have another flashlight, I gotta look for it that I got as well. But uh, this this one right here has 215 lumens and is actually a magnetic work light and this is $7. This thing is actually, uh, now you can see there's a modulation thing. You can really, really tell in this example. It's not the highest quality light, but it is quite bright. And it's a very simple actuation. It has a magnetic tail. It takes standardized batteries. I think in this case, it's two double A's. And if you needed something, a cob style light to keep in a toolbox for $7, that's actually pretty awesome. I am not even gonna bother opening it because I'm gonna end up putting it in part of giveaways. That's the thing with me. Uh, I'll buy things because I know I can just give them away later <laughs> and make content to kind of make the difference. And so I think that this will be fun to throw in a beginner's toolkit that we'll then give to someone. In addition, there's a headlamp there and this thing was scary cheap. I couldn't believe. It, it's, it's ridiculous. Okay, where's the price? Aha, here it is. The headlamp was under $3. <laughs> yeah. You can't buy the batteries for three bucks. But for some reason, this headlamp was uh, three bucks, okay? Is it the greatest headlamp ever? Absolutely not. Is it going to be perfect for kids on their first camping adventure that you don't care if it gets lost? Yes, for sure. And in fact, it's going to get use this weekend because my daughter is gonna spend some time outdoors with her friend and it's a perfect place to use exactly this. So, do I want to use this as a teaching tool to kind of make sure they don't lose it? Of course. And uh, for $3, I think you're going to be hard pressed to beat this. When you go to Home Depot or Lowe's, you're going to see a lot of really garbage flashlights, very much comparable to this. And I mean that they're not very good. And uh, except that they're like 20 or 30 or $40 in some cases, whereas this is like three bucks. So it's kind of a no-brainer, $3, boom, done. Very inexpensive flashlight, great for just having spares around. And because it uses standard fuel, like a AA, well, you're good to go. Sort of a separate aside, but I get a lot of criticism about how I open clamshell packaging. And I wanna describe why what I'm showing you right now is probably the safest way to do this. I, I actually have the blade kind of facing myself and people are like oh that's dangerous it is if you are floating your hand in other words you're pulling it towards you but that's actually not what i'm doing when i'm in here doing this what i'm actually doing is keeping my knuckles on the table and rotating the blade it gives me a lot of control and there's basically nowhere for this blade to go like right and it's it's just it's just always a stable thing my hand 
is never going to accidentally go through because I'm keeping my knuckles against it. There's nowhere for it to go. So I maybe need to make a video on this kind of in its entirety, but uh, yeah, don't don't uh, don't think just because I have the actual edge facing my body that I'm actually not being safe. You can, there is a lot more that goes into using a knife than just what direction the edge is pointed. Sorry, a little aside. Items I found while walking around, and I missed a bunch of them the first time we did a video on Harbor Freight, was this. Uh, it's a six inch electrical data scissor. It is not going to perform at the same level that I've been expecting from things like the Knipex scissor or the Klein scissors, but for $10 and being at Harbor Freight, it's not half bad. Um, my biggest issue is that the serrations are not aggressive enough to keep the material in place. They kind of push out. You see how everything's sliding out the front? It it has nice stability, and they're they're kept together, but it seems to me that they're not quite as sharp. Well, I mean, they're pretty sharp. They're just a little bit less aggressive on the serrations than those other scissors. Now, this is designed primarily for cable, and so it has the wire stripping notch here, which is nice and sharp and excellent. It has the uh, aggressive serrations on the back here. It has the serrations here, and of course, the ability to cut cable inside there as well, soft cable. So, not half bad. If you're going to kind of do a one-stop shop, and you're going to Harbor Freight, it's worth a consideration at the under 10 mark. Make this quick. Try not to look at the items in the checkout aisle. There's plenty of good stuff there, well under the $10 price point. And of course, being that my eight-year-old was there, she's like, hey, can we get some rubber bands for fun? And I'm like, yeah, of course. Very inexpensive, very, very easy to find. And actually, uh, very difficult to find in a lot of other hardware stores, weirdly enough. But yeah, rubber bands. Okay, okay, okay. Fully admit this was an impulse buy here. But check this thing out. Um, it's designed for actually twisting wire. So you actually put a set of wire around something that you're trying to tie. And then you, when you attach it, it locks in place. And then you pull it. And it actually rotates the plier head to spin the wire so it locks it. Am I going to be doing fencing anytime soon? No. But was I tempted at the under 10 mark? Yes. So that's exactly what I did. I ended up buying one of these. And uh, I don't know why. I'm, I'm, I think I was just in a zone at the time. But yeah, here you go. Under 10. You want a safety uh, wire twisting pliers? They have that too. This is going to be the only item that I'm going to recommend you do not purchase. So they had other calipers. I bought this thinking it would be a perfect caliper to use when I'm reviewing knives because it's made of plastic, it's not going to mar the surface of any knife that I'm reviewing, right? Like if I have a nice Damascus blade on a knife, I, I, I don't want to essentially scratch it, right? Especially if it's a nice, um, more dressed up knife versus something that I kind of kick around or abuse. The problem with this is actually the accuracy. It's up to a tenth of an inch. That's our 0.2 millimeters, and that's a decimal place too few for the kind of measurements that you that you need. And because of that, I, I would not recommend this particular one for that purpose. It's gonna be fine for someone who's just playing around. I probably will end up giving this to my daughter who is eight years old and then can use it to measure things. I'll show them how to use it. But for technical purposes, I highly recommend getting a good digital caliper. Uh, there's plenty of them out there, but I wouldn't pick this one. So here is everything that I got at Harbor Freight the last time I was there. And there was actually a couple other things. I bought an extra pair of safety glasses for my daughter so she can kind of do stuff with me. And uh, yeah, actually, the uh, I didn't know this, but there's actually a clip here. And the magnet is really, really strong on this. I was actually kind of surprised at how well they did it. So worth noting here. And the flashlight, the headlamp, very simple, on, off. Great. Works great. Very light. I don't know where I was going with this video other than maybe don't go to Harbor Freight. 
unless you want to spend money because they, they it's just it's just too easy and they have those really scary boxes when you first move in that are always like the deals and it's not like home depot deals where they're like oh it's a dollar off no the it's like clamps for four bucks like stay away is all i'm saying unless you want to spend money stay away from harbor freight uh yeah um just you guys have a good one i have nothing else more to say i always appreciate your time and we'll talk again soon